Hi, I'm Tom Stone with ThermoCare. Today, we're going to be talking about a method that you can use in your facility to help you determine your cooling requirement. It's known as a Wade Water Test. Our team encounters all sorts of situations where there's not enough information available to calculate the cooling requirement theoretically. And what I mean by that is across the 50 plus different industries that we serve, oftentimes there are rules of thumb um, that we can use along with readily available pieces of information like a motor horsepower or a power supply rating or even the mass material type and temperature change of a metal. All of those can be used to calculate a theoretical cooling load based on some equations related to the specific application. Another way that we can do this is using a specification sheet that's provided by the manufacturer of the equipment. However, it's unbelievable how many times I receive that specification document from a manufacturer that only has a flow rate and an inlet temperature. That is not enough information to calculate a cooling load. You need to know the temperature difference, so you would also need that outlet temperature. When you encounter situations like this where there's not enough data available to calculate it theoretically, we need to do a real world experiment to calculate that cooling requirement. That's the topic of today's video. Today we're going to demonstrate a Wade water test with this setup. The goal of this is to gather three key pieces of information. The inlet temperature in, the outlet temperature that we can measure here with these temperature sensors and this gauge, and then the final piece, which is often the most critical and often difficult, is getting a flow rate. Flow rates are notoriously unknown in a lot of process cooling applications, primarily because flow meters can be expensive, hard to install, or not accurate enough for our purposes. So what we will use is a rudimentary system that works quite well. It involves a five gallon bucket, a scale, and a stopwatch. With this, we can run our process, fill this bucket with the outlet cooling water, and time it, knowing the difference between the empty bucket and the filled bucket in weight we can use the weight of water at 8.33 pounds per gallon and determine the volume. And then with our timer, we can change that into a gallons per minute. Using gallons per minute and your temperature differential, you can calculate the cooling requirement directly by multiplying the delta T, the GPM, and dividing it all by 24 to give you your tons of cooling. The thermodynamic basis of the weight water test is an equation Q equals MC delta T, where Q is the energy transferred, M is the mass, C is the specific heat of the material, and delta T is the temperature change. What we do in order to get that mass component is we determine a flow rate and then use the density of the fluid, typically water, to convert that to a mass. Then we use the specific heat of water and the delta T that we've measured and allows us to calculate that Q, which is the energy transfer. We put it all over a time factor to give us a rate. And that's what a cooling capacity is. It's a rate. It's BTUs per hour or joules per second, which is a kilowatt. And so that allows us to calculate exactly what the real world cooling requirement is. The first step in the process is to get the weight of your empty bucket. You'll want to remove it from the scale so that you can zero your scale out. Then you apply your bucket and get your weight reading. That is your baseline to allow you to determine the mass of the water. Now we start the process and establish cooling flow. We want to have our stopwatch ready. We have established cooling flow, and I will switch to the Wade bucket and start the timer at the same time. And we're going. We will let this run for one minute, and then we will stop it and use that weight for the bucket. Get the 
56, 57, 58, 59, one minute. And we switch over at the same time we stop the stopwatch. The ability to implement a weighed water test can be handy for a variety of situations, such as old existing equipment that the data is no longer available, so we need to run the test in order to determine its cooling requirement, or a new or experimental process where there is no specification available and you need to determine it as it's running. These are just a couple instances where conducting this test can give you the real world, real time data in order to determine the actual cooling requirement of the system. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something. Um.